first step in realizing and awaiting redemption is to realize that we're in exile, to realize that we're, we're in a state of, of exile. The concept of Mashiach and the coming of Mashiach, the Messiah, and the era of the redemption is a foundation of Judaism. It's the 12th of the Rambam's 13 principles of faith. Rabbi Israel Meir Kagan, known to many as the Chafetz Chaim, said that belief in Mashiach's coming, the belief in the Messiah's coming, is not only a principle of Judaism, but the principle of principles. One of the foundation points, a nucleus of our religion, something that we're that everything that we do is sort of centered around. The Talmud, the Gemara and Shabbos also says that it's one of the first things that every soul, every person is asked when they finish their lifetime. It's one of the first things that they're asked uh, in heaven if they did with their life, if they, if they awaited the redemption, if it was something that was uh, thought about, spoken about, and strived for during their lifetime of all the things that we do and all the things that we encounter and try to work on in our life, that's one of the first questions that we're asked when we get upstairs. It's not enough also to just believe in the Messiah's coming and Mashiach's coming. A person is actually supposed to await for him. That await and anticipate and sort of uh, expect him every single day. So in order to, to really appreciate what Mashiach is and what the era of the Messiah is, in order to appreciate it, we have to first appreciate the idea that the Jewish people are, are in exile. That we are in exile and that we have, we have been in exile for nearly 2,000 years. To appreciate redemption and being redeemed, you have to realize that there's something to be redeemed from. Many might say, you know, we have life fairly comfortable here in America. Many Jews in contemporary society have a, a fairly comfortable life and are, are able to sort of practice their religion freely. I understand maybe at different parts of history why the idea of of Mashiach and Messiah and the era that comes with it may have been uh, something worth yearning for and worth searching for, but today I feel fairly comfortable. And the, the, the first step in realizing and awaiting redemption is to realize that we're in exile, to realize that we're, we're in a state of, of exile. So we are in exile, and we've been in exile for nearly 2,000 years. One of the, the symptoms of that, and one of, one of the sort of yeah, one of the symptoms of that sickness of the exile state, is that we've been unable to dwell in the land of Israel, in a society that's based on the precepts of the Torah. Okay? Instead, we've been subject the last two thousand years to foreign rule from foreign societies and also been subject to foreign ideologies. Now a person might think, well, the last 60 some odd years we've had control, there's been Jewish control of the land of Israel. But we have to know that even today, okay, the idea of exile, that the Jewish people are in a state of exile, exile is not limited to a geographical location, that we're not physically present in the land of Israel. Exile is much more a state of mind than a state of being, than a geographical location. Exile can occur even to Jews who are living in the land of Israel, even currently, even though it's under Jewish rule. Exile is a state of mind, a state where we don't openly perceive godliness. And the governing system and the way in which we rule our own lives and our lives are ruled is not based on the precepts of Torah. That's a state of exile. That's the exile state of mind. And when Mashiach comes and the Messianic era comes, 
our whole worldview, our whole perception of reality will be godly based and Torah based. So exile is not a geographical location only. It's also, and, and most importantly, it's a state of mind. It's an ideology. One of the purposes, and perhaps the central purpose, of why God put us in this world, says our tradition, is that, first of all, God wanted to do kindness. He wanted to bestow himself kindness on an entity that perceived it to be something outside of him, something different, something separate. And what the thing, the, the goal in which he desired, for whatever reason he desired it, was to make a dwelling place for godliness, making a place where godliness can be palpably perceived in a place that's constructed to conceal godliness. So God creates this physical world full of temptations and lusts and desires, and to all external views, of all, all superficial viewpoints, a cursory look at the world, one could view the world as a place that's devoid of godliness and devoid of spirituality. And God wanted that even in such a state, and even in a place where there's temptations and distractions and, and superficially looks like a place devoid of godliness, that even in such a place, Godliness would be revealed. And this whole idea of godliness being revealed, even in a place that was meant to conceal it or constructed to conceal it, is the highest revelation of godliness that can possibly be. In the very place that was created to conceal godliness, even in such a place that will reveal godliness, that's the highest revelation of godliness that there can be. that idea will be actualized when Mashiach comes.